morning. Really appreciate it. And uh, it's really nice to see so many friendly faces and people that um, we've had a chance to work with over the years or, or be associated with. I actually, we uh, would like to start with um, a short video because I think it tells the story um, much better than any of us could do. And so we'll start with that and then um, say a few words about uh, I'll say a little bit about the program. Gary's going to talk about his perspective as a volunteer, and then we also have some material to read. So let's start with this, and hopefully, Is in her fifth year as a volunteer. Kids are always in front of 
find the 15 weeks is great to say some of the most interesting and cutest things sometimes, and it makes me chuckle, but I have to remember that we're here to read, and uh, they like to get off path quite a bit because they have so much that they want to share. But um, they just, they love to read. They have a genuine interest in it, and it's really fun to watch. It means just the opposite of Kaki McCarthy is a 12-year volunteer whose love of children and desire to help those in need led her to the program. I had a little boy one time, a first grader, who would not read, said he couldn't read until springtime, and then all of a sudden he just started to read. So, and then he wouldn't stop. <laughs> <laughs> almost since its inception. A volunteer for 23 years, she has never missed a school year. It's more fun for you than it probably is for the children, but the children always love soon extend into Man and Manitou Park Elementary, and with this expansion comes a need for more volunteers. Volunteers must attend an orientation <coughs> session and pass a background check. You don't need to be a reading specialist or have any other reading qualifications, but you must be reliable. We ask the volunteers to commit to one training session a week in the beginning of the school year. Each session is four to five minutes. The time and commitment may be minimal, but the rewards for both volunteer and child can last a lifetime. You can make a difference. These children really want to learn, and all it takes is one adult willing to give them knowledge. For more information about the Read to Me program, call 253 383 3951. Okay, they're just going to give up. <laughs> <laughs> Communityhealth.org. Our final story today takes a look at a special opportunity offered to the Point Defiant Zoom Aquarium. As producer David Gordon tells us, Okay, thank you for your patience with that. We didn't test drive it, and uh, it's, uh, we, were, we were connecting through the internet, and uh, obviously a little slow connection, but hopefully you got a, a better sense of the program. Uh, maybe I could start by asking, um, if you could raise your hand if you are currently a tutor or ever been a tutor in this program. Oh, wow. Wow. That's amazing. Oh, that's terrific. So um, I don't need to tell you a whole lot about the program since it, um, many of you are familiar with it. But just let me give you um, a little bit of a picture and, again, uh, uh, give you a chance to hear from Gary's perspective as well. First of all, I want to say that um, this program uh, is something that I really value because I am a reader. I've always been a reader, and I would read everything when I was a kid. Biographies, uh, history, the back of cereal boxes, it didn't matter. And uh, so, so reading is very important to me personally, but it's also, I know how um, reading opens the doors for everything else in life, and so uh, having an opportunity to help children um, have gained that, that gift of reading and the, the skill of reading uh, is really important to me. Um, I'm also a believer in this program because I'm also a former tutor uh, and volunteered in the program. And so I know what a difference it can make uh, in the lives of the children that we work with. Um, just some of the information about the program that you didn't hear in the video, um, we, we work with students in four schools. Uh, at the time the video was done, we were in two and adding two more. So we are in uh, McCarver on the hilltop, uh, Roosevelt on the east side, and Mann and Manitou Park in the south end. So we really focus on schools that have a lot of struggling readers by virtue of their test scores. Um, and don't have another program helping them. I know that you're working through communities and schools. Um, there's other programs that work in various schools. So we try to, to target those schools where there's a lot of need and where there isn't 
already some other kind of uh, community involvement in the school. So um, that's how we focus on these four. Um, the students in those schools are all uh, tend to have um, a higher poverty rate than the district as a whole. Uh, and the students that we tutor have even a higher poverty rate than the other <coughs> students in the school. They also uh, are more likely to be children of color. Um, and so they have a lot of challenges um, in, in reading and, and having someone work with them one-on-one -on -one, uh, makes a huge difference. Um, we have, we do not have our statistics from this year's uh, results, but from last year we saw, uh, especially for the first graders, a huge increase in their, um, uh, the word recognition and, and the words that they could, could read and, and pronounce from the time they started the first grade until the end. So uh, they were way behind their peers um, in, in the beginning of the year, and by the end of the year, they were almost caught up uh, on that measure. Now there's other measures as well, and we are always working to improve the program and find ways to uh, help our tutors have the tools to help the children be even more successful. And we work really closely with Tacoma School District. So this is really a partnership with them. They help fund the program. They give us space in all the in all the school buildings. We work closely with the principals and the <coughs> teachers, um, so that we're in sync with what they're doing with the students and helping them really be successful. Because we are pulling the kids out of the classroom, so we have to be sensitive to that. And we work really closely with those schools to make sure that we're helping um, support what they're doing in the classroom and help the students be successful. So we. Um, we're working with them on providing more training to the tutors, uh, on better measurements about what is really working, what isn't working, and so we're constantly trying to improve the program. Um, it's a great program, as many of you know who've been in it, um, but we've kind of had the same model for over 20 years, and we want to really try to improve it and, and make it even better and help students be even more successful. Um, so we are serving almost 300 students right now in those four schools. Uh, and again, two of those schools only started in January. So with the help of more volunteers, we can serve even more students because we serve those 300 students with 160 volunteers. So obviously many of our volunteers are serving, uh, are working with more than one child. And we'd love to have more volunteers so that we can serve even more students. And uh, we're, we're doing a big active recruitment push uh, this month and next month because the program will start up again uh, 1st of October. So you'll see a lot of ads in the News Tribune and the Weekly as we uh, do that recruitment for more volunteers to help us be able to serve more children. And so, for a volunteer perspective, I'm going to turn over to Gary. Thank you, Liz. Uh, so I'm Gary Brooks. I've been a member of the advisory committee for Read to Me just since earlier this year, but uh, my history with uh, variations of the program does go back quite a ways. So perhaps like some of you who participated as tutors in the Whirlin reading program. I started at Whirlin 10, 12 years ago when I was working in Russell Investments and uh, had a child at Bryant Elementary for a few years there. And then, of course, the program kind of had its uh, changes and uh, got a little lost along the way. But now it's, it's really nice to come back to strong support from Tacoma Community House and have, uh, obviously, a, a nice base established that's growing really well, as you can see by some of the volunteer numbers and such you'll see on the handout that uh, you're about to see here. Uh, one of the things that's uh, kind of interesting about this is, as Liz mentioned, uh, when she was growing up, she had something to read, whether it was biographies or cereal boxes, whatnot. But one of the real challenges with these kids is that there are no books in the home, right? And so that's one of the reasons they're so far behind. And uh, perhaps the most compelling thing to me is what Karen Thomas said in the video, this idea that up until grade three, kids are learning how to read, but after that, you have to read to learn, and you don't get caught up on reading. You just never get caught up on learning and staying in school. It's very clear when you see these kids who are behind what a challenge it is. But the, the program and the ability to volunteer and spend just 45 minutes with these kids each week, you, you can really see that escalation. And, and even in just one year's time, they can catch up quite a bit. Uh, of course, it helps to have uh, you know, a good mentor and someone who's there just to <coughs> and all that. And so participating as a tutor is, is, is quite a rewarding experience. One thing that we've uh, discussed a little bit on the advisory committee is we realize uh, 
once a week commitment for the whole school year, or starting in October, it's not quite the whole school year, but it is quite a bit. And so uh, there is an opportunity to share a tutoring experience. So you can, you can work in pairs and switch every other week or just fill each other's yeah. gaps. That's something that, that is available um, and makes it a little easier to do. Uh, if you keep that in mind. Um, you know, it, it, as with anything from a, an advisory committee standpoint, we're, we're always looking for people's you know, time, talent, and treasures, right? And so there are ways to participate that if you're not able to make that weekly commitment. Uh, certainly uh, having funds to just create uh, a stronger base for the program and continue expanding it within Tacoma schools is, is also uh, something you would, you would welcome. With that, I don't know if we have time for some questions.